what's up my name is tech number here for troubleshoot and welcome back to another video in this video i'll be talking about how to fix a pretty common issue with valorant especially on windows 11 or pretty much exclusively on windows 11. the error is this van 9003 or a different one talking about vanguard being out of compliance with the current system settings something about tpm secure boot etc Basically, this all boils down to Secure Boot not being enabled or the BIOS not being set to UEFI mode. These are things that are required for Vanguard, the Valorant anti-cheat to run properly. It's very annoying, but it does happen, especially on Windows 11. Now, a lot of people may tell you to downgrade to Windows 10, but that's not always necessary. All we need to do is make sure Secure Boot is enabled. If you have a TPM chip, enable that as well. And of course, set your BIOS to UEFI mode. We can do all of this from the BIOS settings, which I'll jump into in just a moment, but I'll need to take pictures and point out where I go as I can't screen record it. Anyways, with the information I've already given you, you could probably go ahead and do it yourself. But if we hold start and press R, then type in MS Info 32 and hit enter, we'll pull up this window here the system information window. Looking inside of here on the system summary tab, you should see BIOS mode and it should have the value of UEFI. Then you should also see secure boot state. This should be set to on. In my case, this is turned off. I'll need to enable secure boot, which may mess up dual booting, but regardless, we can turn it off later on. Basically, all you need to do is make sure your BIOS is set to UEFI mode, disable CSM if you have it, which is compatibility support mode, and if you haven't already, enable secure boot. We do need to reboot our PC to get there. Basically, when you power off your PC and turn it back on, you'll be spamming F1, 2, F11, and F12, sometimes delete. One of those keys will get you into the BIOS menu. When you do, you'll just need to navigate across to and enable secure boot, disable CSM and set your boot mode to UEFI. You'll need to Google your specific motherboard or BIOS software in order to find exactly where you need to go. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Right, there we go. I'm on my BIOS, have my phone balanced. I'll try and be careful here. Basically, if you have a search tool like I do here in advanced mode using F9, your life will be a lot easier. We'll search for TPM. And if you find TPM, simply just make sure that it's enabled or you have something set. TPM version 2 and firmware TPM is probably good enough. Then searching for CSM, launch CSM is disabled, which is what we want. And finally, we want secure boot. If I search for secure, there's nothing in my case, but navigating to advanced, for example, or maybe boot, I have secure boot here. And inside of this, we can choose other OS. I'll set it to Windows UEFI. That way it should be enabled. Key management, there's nothing I need here. And with that, it should be enabled. CSM should be disabled. Boot configuration seems fine. On the advanced tab, I have MD FTPM. It says firmware and discrete and reading the help text down here, firmware means that it's enabled and discrete means that it's disabled. FTPM will be disabled and all data saved and it will be lost. So I'll leave it as firmware TPM. For me, that's enabled. Cool, now we have UEFI mode set, CSM disabled, secure boot set and enabled, and my TPM is enabled too. Now I do dual boot. I have Ubuntu set as the first option here, then Windows. I may need to swap around my boot order for things to be a bit happier, but we'll see in just a moment. I'll save changes and reset or save changes and restart. And just after this, you should be booted back into Windows. If you find that this causes any issues, downgrading to Windows 10 is always an option, but not always the best thing to do. Regardless, we'll see what happens. There we go. I've got my Ubuntu Grub, so I'll choose Windows here. And now we should be booting into Windows with Secure Boot enabled. In my case, I don't think having Secure Boot enabled will cause an issue with Ubuntu. I think that was maybe just for installing that I had to disable it. Anyways, now that I've done that, I'll be back on my desktop in just a moment. There we go. Back on my desktop, I'll hold start and press R. Once again, MS Info 32. And inside of System Info, UEFI, Secure Boot enabled. And now we should be able to fire up Valorant. So I'll search for it, sign in if necessary. And in just a moment, we're on the main menu and things are happy now. I'm now able to play Valorant, whereas before I had some issues and things weren't working properly. Anyways, that's about it for this super quick guide. It really comes down to those options that I mentioned in the start, and they'll usually be hidden somewhere in your BIOS. If worst comes to worst, you can always downgrade to Windows 10, where this isn't a requirement. It's very annoying that it's a requirement on Windows 11, but regardless, hopefully this video helped you. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.